Hello, folks. Hello. Okay, we're going to do the uh, Jameson. Do the cast mason cast, first? cast mason, we'll do the black barrel. Um, Are we going to do these in one video or separate? I don't videos? think so. This is a stout edition. Now, this is interesting because it's finished in craft beer barrels, as they say. What does that mean? They take barrels that were used to age craft beer and they age the oh. whiskey in it. That makes sense. Um, product of Ireland. Okay. And I got these in a set. There was like a special set at the store that had the regular Jameson, the cask mates, and then the black barrel in these like smaller bottles. Now, oh, and this comes in a paper mm -hmm. box. Yeah, it was in like a wooden pallet and it had the three boxes. Now, I finished the regular Jameson a while ago. But Matured in a combination of oak casks, including black barrels, which are flame charred, charred under the watchful eye of our master cooper. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, now. Sherry casks. Mmm. Mm. I haven't had sherry in a while. Okay, and then they're giving you all the things. Butterscots, nectarines, apricots, peppery. You know, we, we did some of these and we didn't pick up all that stuff. But we're not sommelier. No. We're just people on the street. Um, you know, now, now everything is cross-lining. Like beer aged in sherry, sherry aged in beer, port aged in sherry, sherry aged in gin, gin aged in rum, rum aged in whiskey. You know what I mean? Ugh. <laughs> I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? It's, but yeah. Because you run out of ideas, so then you have a flooded market. And you're trying to differentiate yourself, mm -hmm. so you have to. So Jameson cast mates, but they're all they're all 80 proof, so they're all the same ABV. So how do you think the smell of this compares to the original Jameson we just tried? Well, first I want to look at the, oh, the right. appearance. It's darker, you know, not way darker, but it's more golden than yellow. Yeah. You know, Jameson is more yellow. Mm -hmm. This is more golden. Yeah. This is your glass because I see all this lipstick like residue on there. I'm not wearing lipstick. And plus, my glass was chipped two spots. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Not that I'm a chipped glass fan, but you deal with what you have. <laughs> He's very old. Yeah, it's like, uh, what were you asking me before? Oh, just how you think the smell compares to the original oh, okay. Jameson. Well, it's a richer aroma. Mm -hmm. It ought to be. It costs more. Uh, it's more sugary, candy-like, like red apple, candy, candy red apple, like if you went to a fair, a county fair. Or well, if they're talking about Louisiana or Paris sherry fair, barrels, I mean that. Sherry, and I don't have a lot of experience sense. with sherry in port. Um, I, I, I've cooked I, with it. I drank a lot of Taylor sherry, and people said, that's run-of-the-mill stuff. So then I went and bought this really good share, uh, port wine mm -hmm. from Spain, and it tastes like beet juice. And I was like, wow, I paid twice as much. That's gross. And it tastes like beet juice. Port okay. and sherry are great to cook with. Like if you want to make a reduction with cranberries or something to serve over duck, real good. Yeah, well, next time I think I'll get Taylor sherry from New York. Not, I mean Taylor port. Not real port, port style wine. You know, real port comes from port, port, Porto, Portugal. But if I drink something that costs $20 a bottle and it tastes like beet juice, I got a problem with it. I mean, it was really good the first time we had it. We loved it. The week, a week later, it aged and it had been open. Mm. And, like, oxygen got in it. And I was like, oh, well, Lord. Well, that's not the Sherry's fault. It was port. I'm sorry. The no port. Sherry. That's not the port's fault. But it's like, if you open it and it, it deteriorates that fast, that's not a good sign. All right, back to this. But it was pretty gross. And it made me feel sick for, like, 24 hours. Like, nauseous. Sounds like nauseous. it might have spoiled. And my friend was like, David was like, well, I'll cook with it. I'll cook with it. I said, how could this stuff turn so bad? Plus, the body was so heavy. It was thick. It was like viscous. I was like... This has an alcohol burn, but it's not like a repellent. No. Or a but more of a burn than the regular Jameson, for sure. Yeah, even though it's the same alcohol by volume. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, talking about the beer barrels, the sherry barrels and all that, I think it accentuates it, but I don't think it, like, 
overwhelms it. It doesn't change it so much. It mm -hmm. changes it. It tweaks it. Mm -hmm. I like it. It still has that papery note, paper, and I, I'm not against that. I, I think that's just a standard thing. Mm -hmm. I say loose leaf paper, you know, but um, with beer, that's a bad sign. Like they call it getting oxidized, like too much oxygen mm -hmm. got into it and like deteriorated it. I sort of get the butterscotch notes that they talk about, like subtly. Wrong box. Other box. No, wait. Right? Oh, no, that's the one you read originally, though. That's the one oh, that right, has the, the sherry. Box. Okay. So this yeah. talks about coffee, cocoa, and hops. A long, sweet finish with hints of butterscotch and chocolate. Yeah, um, chocolate? I'm getting the butterscotch. Okay. I'm sorry, I think. Maybe butterscotch. It's all very faint. Those are just like little little pinpricks of flavor. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe chocolate. But, it's very but the, subtle. But, but the pro predominant flavor is just, you know, standard whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, it is stronger than the original. De well, the alcohol levels aren't stronger, but I feel the flavor is stronger. Yeah, it's There's a little more, more pronounced. Burn. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a little. And, you know, I, I, I'm thinking about this. And, like, uh, I keep talking about Father Pat at our church. He probably wouldn't like this. You know, he might say, oh, yeah, it's got a lot of interesting flavors and aromas. But then if you asked him what he would want to have with his spaghetti and meatball dinner and garlic bread, you know what he would pick, mm -hmm. the regular Jameson. He'd say, oh, I'll just go with the regular, you know. There's an aftertaste, like a sort of bite that puts me in mind of coffee, like the kind of bitterness and acidity of coffee. So I could, I could see that as part of it. Maybe like a New Orleans blend coffee and chicory. I don't mm. know if you ever had that. Of course. I mean, I'm a 24-year-old from Louisiana. Um, oh, and by the way, I had my windows down on the way over here, and I passed by the huge Folgers uh, mm -hmm. uh, coffee mill right there on the uh, by the Interstate 10. Oh, I didn't know we had that. It's the biggest coffee mill in the world. Wow, I had no idea. And there's three of them in New Orleans. There's like a the, bread the, factory down the road that always yeah, smells bunny. like bread. Well, but if you go to New Orleans, right there. It's not bunny, it's flowers bread. Oh, oh bread, yeah, okay. Yeah. Talking about over here. Yeah, but okay. if you go to New Orleans, right there on I-10, Interstate 10, right? You, oh, that Folgers. I thought you were talking about somewhere outside Tuscaloosa. I was like, New what? No, it's huge. How did I miss it? Miss Brit it, yeah. Remember, Brittany worked there. It's mm -hmm. huge. And, she uh, still wears It's the biggest... Uh, coffee mill in the world. Then down the road, if you take Old Gentile Highway, the old 90, they have their craft, sort of like their craft specialty coffee distill, uh, mill, coffee mill, mm -hmm. which is huge. And then I think there's a third one. So it's incredible. Um, I remember us driving out there to coffee, get just smell Vietnamese coffee. food. And there was like all these mattresses and like random trash on the side of the road. Do you remember that? Um, yeah, because Old Gentile Highway is so remote. That yeah. when people go to put, they go to throw away and be litter bugs, they throw trash along the road. But I love driving into New Orleans and smelling the, Fol the Folgers um, plant. Yeah, and so it brings us back to this. It This kind of has that, evokes that kind of um, coffee aroma. Mm -hmm. But again, all the all the flavors and smells are real are really subtle. Like, none of them are trying to knock you out. None of it is over. Like you said about the Jameson, it's more of a caress than a punch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, none of it is over. It's very subtle. It's very mellow and it's very refined. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Is this better than the standard Jameson? I'm not going to say that. I would say it's sort of like a, co a companion piece. I think it's a little more complex. It's got a little more grape, like white wine character with it, which mm -hmm. is strange, but it's like. Jameson, castmates, it's riding alongside side of it, but it's not something to like, oh, I gotta have castmates. It's so no. much better. If it's Jameson so better. is please please me, then this is Sergeant Puckers. You know? Yeah, more like Like it's just there's more going on. 
But it's the same band. More like with the Beatles or Beatles for sale. But I get you. Okay. Um, Maybe the regular Jameson is Revolver. And this is the White Album. No, I think regular Jameson is like with the Beatles. And this is more like uh, Beatles for sale. Possibly. Um, what is that one? They made the movie. Um, I was about to say eight, eight Days a Week. No, the original movie. Um, from 64, you know, that one. Well, obviously now every time you try a new whiskey, you have to say which Beatles album it is. Right. So the I, I'm going to expect that from here on out. I don't know about y'all. The original Jameson is Meet the Beatles, and this is Beatles for Sale. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks for watching this video production. Words are flowing out loud.